Welcome everyone to The Honest Review. My name is Air Bear. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. So in our previous review of this CyberPower PC, we were kind of talking about some of the performance issues based on temperatures that were mostly component-based in this pre-built PC and where we kind of got skimped as far as the quality of components that were put into this PC and how that would affect the lifespan of the build. So if you wanna check that out, you can click that link up there. But what we are doing today is taking some of the first steps towards PC improvement as far as stepping out of this limited case. Now, when I say the case is limited, I'm really talking about the ability for growth. I don't ever expect to do any type of custom water cooling loops in here. I don't have room for larger radiators. I just don't like the fan layout. And you never know, maybe stepping into a better case with improved airflow is going to help my component temperatures and give me some performance results right away. Now, that is a stretch. I know it's a stretch, but what other case to do this in than the one and only Mastercase H500 Mesh by Cooler Master themselves. Now this case is so highly praised by so many different YouTube channels and for good reason. Now if you haven't already and pretty much anyone who's anyone who's checked out Gamers Nexus knows that they spoke about this case in regards to it being the best possible case for airflow. So today I'm gonna to be running my own little experiment and seeing whether or not I get improved performance and temperature results out of my components. Now I'm not going to change anything that is in my case. I'm gonna make all of this fit in the Cooler Master H500M. Now I did run a 15 minute stress test on this PC that was stress testing the CPU and the GPU simultaneously. Now the CPU, which is an i9-9900K, is being cooled by a single 120 Acetec AIO radiator. So it's not an NZXT version or a Cooler Master version or a Thermaltake, et cetera, et cetera. This is just strictly the Acetec AIO pump and radiator. All right, so this blower model GPU runs really hot. And anyone who's ever had one knows this for sure to avoid blower models like the freaking plague because guess what running at really really high temps for extended durations of time under heavy load is just bad for the lifespan of your graphics card it's like you're constantly pushing the ceiling and seeing how far how long it can perform under those high temperatures and it's just not healthy to run those type of temperatures. So I've been putting this under a lot of stress and I can't wait to see if I can improve the thermals in my graphics card. So anytime that I'm doing live streaming, video editing, gaming, it is just running at full load and it is running at like 85 degrees Celsius all the way upwards 90. Yeah, seeing it get close to 90 degrees Celsius anytime that I ran just light overclocking on it definitely scared me and it made me want to stray away from doing any overclocking on this graphics card. So like I said, 15 minute stress test was done on this PC as far as thermals in the CPU and the GPU and the idle average in all the cores for the CPU was right at 28 degrees Celsius. And then the idle average for the GPU was 44 degrees Celsius. All right, now during the stress test when all the temperatures ramped up, I was actually impressed by how well the AIO cooler in here ran, especially since it's just a single 120 setup. It actually kept it down to 60 degrees Celsius or lower. The average was right at 59 degrees Celsius. So the GPU during the stress test was completely set to its stock settings, which actually had it set to where there was supposed to be a ceiling at 81 degrees Celsius so that it would ramp up the fans to try and keep it lower than 81 degrees Celsius. So during the entirety of the stress test, it pretty much ramped straight up to 80, 81 degrees Celsius. And then by the end, it is just hovering at 84, 85 degrees Celsius. Even though it's supposed to be limited to 81, it pretty much stayed right there at 84 degrees Celsius. So that was our average and our highest temp achieved was 85 degrees Celsius. So now one must ask the question, can this new case improve our thermals with airflow alone? We're about to find out.
This review and data comparison is in no way sponsored by Cooler Master. I have no affiliate links for you guys, no discount codes, and as always, this is the honest review. All right, everyone, case swap is complete and the results are in. Now, there are some inherited changes with this new case because of the included two 200 millimeter RGB fans in the front and the rear 144 millimeter fan as an exhaust. Now, because we have these new fans pre-installed into this case, I'm able to use our old four case fans as top exhaust and also create the same CPU cooling setup that we had going on with our 120 AIO. And in order to maintain the integrity of our temperature test, we're gonna have to keep our push-pull configuration on the radiator itself. So we do see an immediate improvement in our temperatures across the board. Now, our CPU idle temp average was 28 degrees Celsius, and that dropped down one degree Celsius, not too surprised that it wasn't that big of a jump. Now, under full load, the temperatures for the CPU, which was a 59 degrees Celsius average, dropped down to 57 degrees Celsius. Now our old GPU idle average was 44 and we see it drop down to 42 degrees Celsius. Now under full load, our average GPU temps were 84 degrees Celsius, which we see a full five degrees Celsius drop down to 79. Now that's actually a pretty impressive temperature drop just from air cooling alone. Now 79 degrees Celsius is actually still really hot and it's just not a healthy temperature to be running your graphics card under full stress and pressure from gaming or video editing, whatever you're doing, if you're running your graphics card at full load for hours and hours and hours at a time, it's just not a temperature that you wanna keep it at if you plan to have your graphics card for a very long time. So airflow definitely matters, but to be realistic, these aren't huge temperature drops by any means. I'm definitely gonna have to explore some other options in future videos on how we are going to cure our high GPU temperatures and create room for more healthy overclocking. But the reality is that now I have the room to grow in the H500M that wasn't present in our old case. I was limited to 120 millimeter fans in our old build. I would have never been able to use any AIO radiator larger than a 240. And I had one single exhaust at the rear and the top of the case. And I really needed a case that we could grow into over time. So as our build improves and we upgrade our components, eventually we will be creating a separate stream PC instead of doing single PC streaming. We do have some nice improvements to note as far as our front inputs. We are boasting four USBs, two of them being 3.0s, the other two being 2.0s. We have full compatibility in the front and in the top of the case for 360 millimeter AIO radiators. Full support for 120 and 144 millimeter fans at the top and the rear. Everything is really well thought out as far as the design and the varying placement that you might be utilizing as far as your radiators, needing to be able to adjust your fan placements, and the configuration of your CPU cooling rig if you go to water cooling. And that is definitely a huge deal for me because in the future, I do look forward to creating a custom water-cooled PC. Really, the sky is the limit and I can't wait to see how far we go with our upgrades. And I can't lie, I absolutely love the white case. I almost got the gunmetal version, but I'm very happy that I went with the white. The Cooler Master H500M cases are averaging $99 to $200, depending on the variant that you pick, and they are worth every single penny. Like I said earlier, there is a reason that Gamers Nexus praised this case so highly and pretty much coined it the king of airflow, especially as far as price to performance and the diversity of the builds that you can put into it. We do have an active giveaway running on the channel. We're giving away a Battle Beaver custom controller on our Twitch channel to a completely random viewer in the chat. If you wanna check that out, all links will be in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. I look forward to some future tech videos as far as mice, keyboards, monitors, and some custom cooling for our GPU. Definitely leave a comment below as far as your opinion on our build, aesthetically and performance-wise. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. That's it for me, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.